The Japanese are renowned for being some of the most polite people in the world, and they place a great emphasis on societal manners and etiquette in their daily lives. In fact, in 2016, the Tokyo Good Manners Project was initiated to encourage good conduct and behavior in public places through public awareness campaigns. Although it may seem like a lot of effort to some, the Japanese consider public conduct to be a crucial aspect, which has helped them maintain their reputation as a polite and respectful society. If Japan is on your bucket list of dream destinations, or if you're just curious about life in Japan, then this video is tailored just for you. Etiquette is a crucial aspect of Japanese culture, and getting it wrong can lead to being perceived as rude or ignorant. As a result, it is critical for people going to Japan or working with Japanese colleagues to understand a bit about their culture. How to address people is an important place to start. In Japan, people have two names, a surname and a first name. The surname is inherited from the father and comes before the first name. When addressing people, jumping to use their first name can be seen as offensive, especially if the person is older or holds a higher position than you. This is because hierarchy is an important part of Japanese culture. To make the right impression, it is customary to suffix their surname with the honorific term, San. So, if you are speaking to Mr. Taro, for instance, you should address him as Taro-san. If you're speaking to Mrs. Taro, then she too should be addressed as Taro-san. However, if the person you are addressing has lived or worked outside of Japan, they may introduce themselves with their first name. In this case, you should prefix their first name with the honorific term, San. The same rule applies when referring to someone in the third person. Since respect is highly valued in Japanese culture, you may also see the suffix san in company names. For instance, the company Sony might be referred to as Sony-san on a document. While foreigners are expected to shake hands, the traditional form of greeting is to bow. How far you bow depends on your relationship with the other person as well as the situation. The deeper you bow, the more respect you show. A foreign visitor, typically referred to as gaijin in Japanese, may bow the head slightly since no one expects foreigners to generally understand the subtle nuances of bowing. Typically, a nod of the head or a small bow is appropriate when interacting with someone of lower status, like a waitress. This acknowledges the difference in social standing while still showing politeness. When meeting someone of similar status, it is customary to offer a bow of equitable angle and length. This demonstrates mutual respect and equality in the relationship. When encountering someone of higher status, such as a senior colleague, it is considered respectful to initiate the bow. The bow should be deeper and more prolonged, indicating deference and humility. Holding the bow for a moment before returning to an upright position adds sincerity to the gesture. If you bow too low for a waitress, for instance, then she will again bow even lower to avoid making the person of higher status uncomfortable. Holding the bow for a brief moment rather than quickly coming back up is a sign of respect because it shows that you are genuinely acknowledging the other person's presence and status. The Japanese heavily rely on facial expressions, tone of voice, and posture to understand what someone is feeling. They often trust nonverbal communication more than spoken words, since words can have multiple meanings. The meaning of words is heavily influenced by the context in which they are spoken, so it is important to understand the situation to fully comprehend the message being conveyed. Frowning while someone is speaking is interpreted as a sign of disagreement, so most Japanese are accustomed to not showing any external sign of emotion when speaking. Nonverbal communication is so important in Japanese culture that there is a book called Reading Japanese Signs by Ian MacArthur for foreigners to learn how to interpret these signs. Moreover, it is considered rude to stare into the eyes of someone senior to you in age or status, and in crowded situations, it's common for people to avoid eye contact to maintain privacy. In Japanese society, saving face is crucial. They believe that turning down a request can cause embarrassment and loss of face for the other person. So if they cannot agree to a request, they will either say, it's inconvenient, or it's under consideration. Personal dignity is highly valued in Japanese culture, and having a high status among one's peers is associated with having honor. Therefore, they avoid openly criticizing, insulting, or putting anyone on the spot. When it comes to gift giving in Japan, a highly significant and meaningful ritual, the way in which a gift is presented and wrapped is just as important as the gift itself, and sometimes even more important. Gifts are given for various occasions, and while they need not be expensive, it is essential to ask someone who understands the culture to help you decide what type of gift to give. Good quality chocolates or small cakes are a great idea. 
However, you should avoid giving lilies, camellias, or lotus blossoms, as they are associated with funerals. Also, steer clear of white flowers of any kind, as they are also associated with funerals. Gifts are given in odd numbers, but not nine, as the numbers nine and four are considered unlucky in Japan. If you buy the gift in Japan, have it wrapped, and choose pastel colors for the wrapping paper. It is also worth noting that gifts are not necessarily opened upon receipt. On the rare occasion you are invited to a Japanese home, it is customary to remove your shoes before entering inside. Slippers are provided at the doorway for indoor use. When removing your shoes, leave them pointing away from the doorway you are about to walk through. This practice is considered respectful. Arriving on time or not more than five minutes of the agreed time is important when visiting someone's house, especially for dinner. Whereas for larger social gatherings, it is generally acceptable to arrive a little later than the specified time. However, punctuality is still appreciated and being excessively late may be seen as disrespectful. When it comes to dressing, unless informed otherwise, it's advisable to dress as if attending a formal or office setting, even for casual events. Another thing to note is that when using the toilet, it is customary to switch to the available toilet slippers. These slippers are meant for bathroom use only and should be left in the bathroom when you are finished. Wearing them back into the living space is considered unhygienic. It is also customary for guests to wait to be directed to their seats. The honored guest or eldest person is typically seated in the center of the table, furthest from the door. Chopstick etiquette is also crucial in Japanese dining. It's essential to learn how to use chopsticks properly, avoiding pointing with them or piercing food. After every few bites, during breaks in eating, or when engaging in conversation, chopsticks should be returned to the rest. However, crossing chopsticks on the rest is to be avoided. When it comes to handling food, it's customary to place bones on the side of the plate and to try a bit of everything on offer. Guests are encouraged to inquire about unfamiliar dishes and are allowed to express their preferences by making a face if a particular taste is not to their liking. Distinct rules govern the consumption of noodles and rice in Japanese dining culture. Slurping noodles and soup is considered acceptable and even common. However, the mixing of other foods with rice is generally discouraged, and it is customary to eat them separately. The protocol for drinking involves a strategic approach. If a guest does not wish to have more to drink, leaving some liquid in the glass signals this preference, as an empty glass may be interpreted as an invitation for a refill. Ending the meal gracefully is emphasized through specific practices. Chopsticks should be placed on the chopstick rest of the table after finishing, and under no circumstances should they be laid across the top of the bowl. Leaving a small amount of rice in the bowl may prompt the offer of more, while finishing every grain indicates the desire to decline additional rice. However, it is culturally acceptable to leave a small amount of food on the plate when concluding the meal. These guidelines collectively showcase respect for guests, elders, and cultural traditions, emphasizing the importance of cultural sensitivity and appreciation for the host's customs. When it comes to negotiating, the Japanese tend to avoid confrontation and have a hard time saying no, so it is best to rephrase a question so they can answer yes. For example, you may ask, do you disagree with this? Another point to note is that the Japanese often remain silent for long periods of time. This means that you need to pay close attention to their non-verbal communication and be patient to make sure they have understood what was said. These are only a few of the many etiquettes in Japan. It is interesting to note that, in the past, women in Japan were expected to play domestic roles and were often subordinate to men. They were also excluded from certain sacred areas and had to show deference to hierarchical authority in both speech and behavior. However, things began to change in 1947 when a new legal framework aimed at gender equality was established. This provided women with increased access to education, job opportunities, and career advancement. Despite these legal changes, progress in narrowing the gender gap, achieving equal pay, and educational attainment has been slow. In present-day Japan, the concept of total equality remains an ideal rather than a norm. One thing that hasn't changed is the importance of family values in Japanese society. Children are considered the focal point of the family, and strong bonds are cultivated between mothers and their children from an early age. Compulsory education begins at the age of six and spans six years in elementary school and three years in middle school. Although formal education becomes optional after middle school, many continue to pursue further education. Before compulsory schooling, children have two preschool education options, nursery school from the age of three and kindergarten from the age of five. Overall, 
the emphasis on child rearing is still prevalent in Japanese society, shaping the cultural landscape. That will be all about Japan for this video. If you like the content, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel.